Hi, this is the third video in our series on the statistical treatment of equilibrium. In the first video, we talked about how to set up systems of equations that interrelate the concentrations of chemical species in a system. In the second video, we talk about how to calculate numbers that are fairly close to the actual concentrations by assuming that certain concentrations will be negligible overall. And in this video, we're going to talk about using a computerized tool, the solver function in Microsoft Excel, to get more exact concentrations. Now, this is a tool that does not come built in. And so what you need to do is you need to go to Tools, and you need to go to Excel Add-ins. Um, and so there's another way to get to that too, uh, which is if you go to Data, then there's this analysis tools button. So either way, you'll get to this window. And what we're looking for right now is the solver add-in. So if you click that, it will install it. And now you're going to have this button. Again, this is in the data tab that shows you the solver function. We're going to look at the first problem we've been using in our series. I'm only doing one problem just because this already took a lot of time, and I don't think I have time to explain more than one problem, but we will do the second problem in class. So if you remember, the first problem is to take half a mole of pure acetic acid and dilute it to one liter with water. And so we came up with a system that had four different unknowns, H plus, OH minus, acetic acid, and acetate anions. We also came up with this series of four equations that interrelated those concentrations. What we're going to do now is we're going to put those into Microsoft Excel and figure out what those actual concentrations are. Now, the first thing we have to do, um, I've input our four variables from that first problem right here. And what we're going to do is we're going to, once again, use those three equations that are not our base equation. And we are going to rewrite them in terms of H+. So we already kind of did this when we did our solving by approximation. But what I'm going to do is a little bit different here. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to look for the easiest one to solve for, which is OH minus. That's equal to 10 to the minus 14th divided by H plus. And so I will just go ahead and put that right in here. So that's uh, 10 to the minus 14th. You can put that easily into Excel as 1 E minus 14th divided by H plus, which is going to be this cell. Now, right now we don't have anything for H plus, and you can see that gives us this divide by zero error. So what I'm gonna do to get around that is I'm just gonna put in a random number for H plus, and we know it's gonna be a really small number. So let's say 10 to the minus fifth. That at least will keep us from getting errors. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to figure out acetate. Now, remember that acetate is equal to H plus minus OH minus. In the past, we've substituted in 10 to the minus 14th over H plus for that, but we don't need to do that in Excel because that's just going to be H plus, which is this cell, minus this cell. And then our acetic acid if we rearrange the Ka expression, we get this that gives us acetic acid concentration in terms of H plus concentration times acetate concentration, both of which we already have in our spreadsheet. So we can just go ahead and link to those cells. So this is going to be this times that divided by 1.75 times 10 to the minus fifth. So now we've used those three equations to relate three concentrations to the concentrations of H+. So now we have our target equation. And the reason I call it the target equation is because I have used solver so much. 
and solver asks you for a target cell. So what we're going to do now is we're going to make that and we're going to do it by rearranging our target equation into this expression here. So basically what I've done is I've set it up so that our function equals zero. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put equals 0.5 minus the acetate concentration minus the acetic acid concentration. Okay, so that should all equal zero. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to square it. Okay, so right now that's about 0.25. Now when you use solver and you click on the solver button, it's going to ask you for some things. So set objective, that is your target cell. And that is going to be whatever you derived from your target equation. Okay, so there. And what we want to do is we want to minimize this. Ideally, it would have a value of zero, but we're not going to click value of zero. And the reason we do that is because sometimes it just decides to set all of our values to zero to make everything else zero. So I generally don't use that. I generally just try and minimize it. And so we're going to make this as small as possible. And if it's a super small value, then we know that the sum of acetic acid and acetate is going to be close to 0.5. The reason we had to square that value is because that gets rid of the effect of negative numbers because you could make something very negative and then that would be minimum. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to try and minimize this and we're going to do it by changing our variable cells. And our variable cell that we're going to change is H+. So let's click on this and it's going to be this. Everything else is linked to H plus concentration. So as the H plus concentration changes, so will all the other concentrations. It is possible to do this with more than one variable if those variables are not linked to each other. And in fact, I did quite a bit of that during my grad school research. Okay, so here we go. And now what we're going to do is solve. And so now what you could see is solver has found a solution. And so we want to keep the solver solution. Um, you only restore original values if something has gone very wrong. Um, but let's close this and let's take a look at our numbers. So you can see that our H plus concentration is basically 2.949 times 10 to the minus third. And if you go back and look at what our approximations found, it was about 2.94 times 10 to the minus third. So this is actually closer to 2.95 times 10 to the minus third. And so you can see that approximations will get you a little bit off. Our OH minus concentration previously was 3.4 times 10 to the minus 12th. You can see that's pretty close to what it was. Again, our acetate concentration is exactly equal to our H plus concentration and our acetate concentration. We, we previously calculated 0.497 and that's more or less what it is here. So you can see that our approximations worked out pretty well, but this gives us slightly more precise answers. So now what I want to do is I want to go back and I want to show you why I picked that acetate mass balance equation as our target equation for solver. And so what I want to do is I want to go and I want to try using solver with the equations that we used last time. So once again, I'm going to just throw something random in here. Actually, we know what it's supposed to be. So 2.94 E minus three. Uh, OH minus is 10 to the minus 14th divided by H plus. This part hasn't changed. H plus minus OH minus. And then this, we're going to do it differently and we're going to pick this as our target equation. So that means we have to use our acetate mass balance equation to calculate acetic acid. So 
this is going to be 0.5 minus this. So now for our target cell, what we want to do is we want to say that this equals H plus times this divided by this minus 1.75 times 10 to the minus fifth. Okay, and then we're going to take all that and we're going to square it. Now, you see this number is a lot smaller than the one that we started with in the past. Uh, let's try running solver on it. So again, we're going to, uh, this has, yeah, we're getting this. Um, we're um, doing a minimum by changing the variable cell that is H plus, and let's hit solve. Now, you'll notice it hasn't really changed. And the reason is because we started out with a really tiny number, 1.22 times 10 to the minus 14th. Um, well, you could, you could try doing, let's, let's see, we, let's try running solver again, starting from a different starting point. You can see that these numbers are really tiny because when we're multiplying, we get those really tiny numbers. Um, and you see that it doesn't change. So the thing is, it's trying to get this as close as possible to zero, but it looks at this and says, hey, that's really close to zero. I don't need to do anything. And so when you set up something where you're dealing with really tiny numbers, solver doesn't work really well. Whereas with this one, we did end up with a tiny number at the end, but because we were subtracting 0.5 minus these things, it was a lot easier to end up with this really tiny number because we were starting with a large number. So basically what Solver does as it works is it takes your number that you start with and it maybe nudges it up just a little bit and says, Oh, look, that's getting farther away from zero. That's getting larger in my target cell. So I'm going the wrong direction. And then it will start going the other way. I'm going to go down a bit. And then it says, oh, that's getting smaller. I need to keep going this way. And so it basically is going to change that value in your variable cell until it can find something where it's at the absolute minimum. And that's basically what Solver is trying to do. And when you understand that it does that, it helps you to pick those target equations appropriately. So I've always had the best luck using some sort of addition equation. So whether that be a, a charge balance equation or a mass balance equation as my target equation when I set something up in Solver. So in this video, we've been talking about just one computerized tool that you can use to help solve for fairly exact concentrations in a chemical system of the species in a chemical system. Now there are perhaps better tools, but most of them require quite a learning curve. And so we're not going to use them for now. Some of these tools are things like R, the USGS's free software, uh, FreakSy. There are also commercial software applications that help you figure out the balance of species in a, in a system, but the commercial ones tend to be fairly expensive and we don't have subscriptions to them here. So we're going to use the, the cheap one that is easy to use. Again, R and FreakSy are both free but come with a substantial learning curve. So if you already know R, I highly recommend that you use that instead. And hopefully someday I'll make a series of videos on how to use FreakC. Um, but I think that would be a lot more time consuming. Anyway, I hope this was helpful and I look forward to seeing you again soon.